All right. Trillionth of a second shutter speed camera captures chaos in action. Oh, my life. To take a picture of the best digital cameras on the market, open their shutter for around one four thousandth of a second. To snapshot at, uh, atomic activity, you need a shutter that clicks a lot faster. With that in mind, scientists have unveiled a way of achieving a shutter speed that's uh, a mere trillionth of a second, or 250 million times faster than those digital cameras. It makes it uh, capable of capturing something very important in material science. Hmm, if it's material science, I actually might move something up here. Wait a second. Not this. No. All right. And that could be its own section. Then I have something else to It's for the creation. Actually, maybe moving all these over here would be because I, like I said, I, um, try and keep them together, uh, grouped together so I can, when I cut them to put them in on YouTube, that it's more of a, it fits well, you know? Yeah, anyways. Um, a million times faster than those digital cameras. This makes it capable of capturing something very important in the uh, material science. Dynamic disorder. Once again, my life, and I, I'm, I'm taking that name, dynamic disorder. God. <laughs> Um, simply put, when clusters of atoms move and dance around in a material in specific ways over a certain period, triggered by a vibration or a temperature change, for example, it's not a phenomenon, phenomenon that we fully understand yet, but it's crucial to the properties and reactions of materials. The new super speedy, super speedy <laughs> shutter speed system revealed in 2023 gives us um, much more insight into what's happening with dynamic disorder. Researchers are referring... Their, to their invention as a veritable shutter uh, atomic pair distribution function as, good God, VSPDF for short. It's only with this new VSPDF tool that we can really see this side of materials, says materials science Simon Bylinch at the universe, uh, Columbia University in New York. With this technique, we'll be able to watch a material and see what atoms are um, are in the dance and which are sitting out. Save the last dance. Ha! The fast a fast shutter speed captures more precise snapshots of time, which helps pull for moving quickly moving objects like rapidly jittering atoms. Using a low shutter speed in a photo of a sports games, for instance, and you'll in end up with blurred players on the field uh, in the frame. Here's the illustration. Um, uh, illustration shows the atomic structure of the GETE -E at slower on the left and faster on the right shutter speeds. To achieve this aston astonishingly quick snap, um, the VS PDF uses neurons to measure the position of atoms rather than the conventional Photography techniques. The way that the neurons hit and pass through material can be tracked to measure the surrounding atoms, which changes in energy levels equivalent to the shutter uh, speed adjustments. These variations in shutter speed are significant, as well as the trillionth of a second shutter speed. They're vital in picking out dynamic disorder from the relative but different static disorder. Dynamic disorder and static disorder. So I exist on both, <laughs> both spectrums, ah, both ends of that spectrum. Um, I'm just disorder altogether. Um, the normal background uh, jiggling on the spot of atoms that don't enhance the material's functions. It gives us a whole new way to untangle the complexity of what's going on in complex materials, hidden effects which could supercharge their properties. 
In this case, the researchers trained their neutron camera on a material called germanium telluride, T -E -T -E, uh, I mean G-E-T-E, -E, which, because of its particular properties, is widely, widely used to convert waste and heat into electricity, or electricity into cooling. The camera revealed that the GETE -E remains structured as a crystal on average at all temperatures, but at higher temperatures it displayed more dynamic disorder, where the atoms exchanged motion into thermal energy following a gradient that matches the direction of the material's spontaneous electric polarization. Better understanding these physical structures improves our knowledge of how thermoelectrics work enabling us to develop better materials and equipment, such as the instruments powering the Mars rovers when the sunlight isn't available. Through models based on observations, I mean, we could also use that on Earth when sunlight isn't available, you know, because, we'll say, um, the solar panels only work when the sun's out. The models based on observations captured by the new camera the scientific understanding of these materials and processes can be improved. However, there's still plenty of work to do to get the VSPDF ready to be a widely used method of testing. We anticipate that the VSPDF technique described here will become a standard tool for reconciling, reconciling local and average structures and energy materials, the researchers explained. All right. Since I moved this all together, revolutionary new uh, concrete doesn't have any cement in it. Concrete has long been uh, has long been one of the most common construction materials, and you see it just about everywhere. However, lately, however, some scientists have been trying to find uh, ways to create concrete. I mean, cement-free concrete, and now they've come up with a pretty solid option. One of the main reasons behind wanting to use concrete without cement is that it can help reduce environmental impact that traditional concrete has on the planet. Um, look up urban heat island effect. Um, but, but also one of the other problems is, okay, okay, cement production is actually one of the more significant contributors to greenhouse gas emissions. Um, so finding a way to cut down on that will greatly benefit the fight against climate change. But one of the other things is it also holds heat far easier. Urban heat island effect uh, makes cities hotter because the concrete is holding the heat. Um, and, and is usually, uh, you know, then releasing it usually in the afternoons or at night. But it, it's just really, really hard. <laughs> um, and one of the easiest way to actually uh, fight against it is actually planting trees. But I mean, cities, trees, what are those? And we've seen another of options come up too for making uh, cement free concrete. Some of these include using steel slag and industrial race to develop uh, low CO2 additives that can be mixed in with other excavation materials to create a concrete like material. And now a company called Secrete. Ah, uh, names. I have become, technologies have become one of the first to use concrete without cement in a commercial building project. So far, it seems the project has been going well, with over 60 tons of concrete that doesn't use cement being poured into the foundations of the building. See, Crete says that the concrete has um, excellent flowability and was able to achieve over 500 pounds per square inch of loading strength. Uh, finding ways to incorporate cement-free concrete like this into construction projects is going to completely revolutionize the industry while also helping us slow down the rate which greenhouse gas emissions are increasing global temperatures. And because the new concrete meets the same industry standards that cement concrete does, it shouldn't pose any danger to the buildings with buildings is used within. Unfortunately, few other companies experimenting with this new type of concrete are ready to scale it up to the same level as secrete. However, we'll see more in the future. Um, but for now, we can at least be rest assured that someone's actually pushing things forward. Yeah. That's kind of interesting, though. All right. 
math mash and math mash yeah math, uh, what am i saying mathematician i don't know what i was saying a second ago reveals equals has more than one me meaning in math there are some pretty nebulous concepts in mathematics that can be hard to wrap your mind around i might need also a soft drop um but the meaning of equals is what was one we thought we had covered. It turns out mathematicians actually cannot agree on what the definition of what two things equal. It could cause some headaches for uh, computer programs that are increasingly being used to check mathematical proofs. This academic squabble has been bubbling along for decades. I know, right? But it's finally come to a head because computer programs used for formalizing or checking proofs need to have a clear, specific instructions, not ambiguous definitions of mathematical concept that are open to interpretation or rely on the context computers don't have. British mathematician Kevin Buzzard of Imperial College London ran into this problem when collaborating with computer programmers, and it prompted him to revisit the definitions of this equals to that to challenge various reasonably sounding slogans about equality. Six years ago, Buzzard wrote in his pre-printed post at the uh, RV server, I thought I understood mathematical equality. I thought that it was one well-defined term. Then I tried this started to try and do master's levels mathematics in a computer theorem provider and discovered the equality was a rather thornier concept than I appreciated. Uh, <laughs> the equal signs uh, with its two parallel lines elegantly represent a partiality between objects placed on either side of them was invented by a Welsh mathematician, Robert Record in 1557. It didn't catch on at first, but in time, uh, record's brilliantly intuitive symbol replaced the Latin phrase uh, uh, aquilus and later uh, laid the groundwork for computer science. Exactly 400 years after its invention, the equal sign was first used as a part of a computer program language called Fortran 1 yeah, in 1957. The concept of equality has a much longer history, though, dating back to ancient Greece at least. Modern mathematicians in practice use the term rather loosely. Oh, okay. In familiar usage, the equal sign sets up equations that describe different um, mathematical objects that represent the same, um, same value or meaning, something which can be proven with a few switcheroos and logical transformations from side to side. For example, the integer two can be described as a pair of objects as can one plus one. But a second definition of equality has been, come, has been used among mathematicians since the late 19th century, which set, theor which set theory emerged. Set theory, oh God, has evolved it, and with it, mathematicians' definition of equality has expanded too, to encompass the notions of isomorphism where two distinct sets can be considered equal in a sense, then the elements within them, cor within them correspond to one another. So, so math is ahead of um, people who are saying that <laughs> there's only two biological genders. I'm half joking with that. I am half joking with that. Math was able to keep up. Since the late 19th century, these sets match up with each other in completely natural ways, and math math mathematicians realized it'd be really convenient if we just called those equal as well. However, confusion can arise in mathematics when um, equality and isomorphism are treated as a meaning as meaning the same thing, which they do not. Megablocks trying to do English. I mean, no clue on that one. 
I say, I, I do English well, and it's my first language. It's my main language. I mean, I know bits and pieces of other languages, but not enough to be um, considered even, like, past, like, preschool levels of putting things together. Well, not even preschool. Pre-preschool levels. Like, learning first words levels. Not entire sentences levels. C spot run probably is the closest level. However, confusion can arrive in mathematics when equality and isomorphism are treated as meaning the same thing, which they do not, and the tension is especially apparent in the world of computers, which only recognize the traditional mathematical notion of equality. None of the computer systems that exist so far capture the way that math, math, uh, mathematicians such as Hoth, Goral, Thrudek use the equal system. Um, referring to Alexander Gothardek, a leading mathematician of the 20th century, who relied on a set a theory to describe equality. Buzzard thinks the incongruency between the mathematicians and the machines should prompt math minds to rethink exactly what they mean by mathematical concepts as foundational, as equality, so the computers can understand them. Um, when one is forced to write down what one actually means and cannot hide between such ill-defined words, one sometimes finds that one has to do extra work or even rethink how certain ideas should be presented. Well, I mean, what they could always do is like have a switch over, kind of like Fahrenheit or uh, Celsius when, you know, doing math, uh, like, with a calculator and stuff, or degrees or anything like that, have that ability to like, I don't, have the, uh, tell the computer to switch between either. I, I know enough to say, no comprende espanol, no hablo espanol. Um, uh, nada, which means nothing, and... I used to know a lot more when I had to go down... Oh, well, I didn't have to. I went down with my dad when I was like seven to Puerto Rico, not Co Puerto Rico, Costa Rica. And uh, since he was doing uh, some scientific work down there, and I was there for about a week, give or take. And so he had us, uh, me and my sister learned Spanish through the Muzzy tapes, which are hilarious. Um, if y'all ever see any of that stuff, like learning different stuff like Pequeño. Pequeño. Muzzy tapes. Ah. I'm old. Um, physicists accidentally found a new way to represent pi. Nom. Our favorite mathematical concept, uh, constant pi. No, uh, my parents bought it. I mean. It kind of worked, don't get me wrong. But in the sense that I memorized what was being said, not comp in the sense of mimicking it, but if I had to create my own sentences out of it, I was fucked. Absolutely fucked. It was like a mimicry of it. I could mimic it. I could mimic these sentences and know what they meant, but I couldn't create any of my own. Uh, okay. Our favorite mathematical constant, pi, is describing the ratio between a circle's circumference and its diameter has taken a new meaning. The new representation was born out of the twists and turns of string theory, and two physicists' attempts to better describe um, particle collisions. Our efforts initially were never to find a way to look at pi. Nom. Says An Nita Sina of the Indian Institute of Science, who co authored the new work with fellow uh, I, 
uh, I guess, Indian Institute um, theorists, physicists, Arnab Pri Priya Sana. All we were doing was studying the high energy phys physics and quantum theory and trying to develop a model with fewer and more accurate pr parameters to understand how particles interact. We were excited when we got a new way to. <laughs> We were excited when we got a new way to look at pi. Being a mathematical constant, the value of pi hasn't changed. However, the irrational a number uh, irrational a number is. Um, over time, we've simply forgot. Uh, we've simply gotten more exact renderings of its precise value, achieving 105 trillion figures to the last count. This new work from. Um, the uh, theoretical scientists. Uh, sorry, I'm just going to say I don't want to sl continue slaughtering your names. I'm sorry. Um, po posits a new series of representation of pi, which they say provides an easier way to extract pi from calculations used to decipher the quantum scattering of high energy particles flung about in a particle accelerators. But some math uh, mathematicians disagree. I mean, you gotta have all sides on it. In mathematics, a series lays out the components of a parameter, uh, like pi, such that mathematicians can quickly arrive at the value of pi from its component parts, it's like following a recipe, adding each ingredient in the correct amount in order to produce a tasty dish. Except if you don't have the recipe, then you don't know which ingredients make up a meal or how much to add and when. Finding the correct number and combination of components to represent pi has stumped researchers since the early 1970s, when they first tried to represent pi in this way, but quickly abandoned it since it was too complicated. Um, this group was looking at something else entirely. Ways to mathematically represent a subatomic particle interactions using as few and as simple factors as possible. Um, okay, I'm going to try and say the last name. Um, Sa Saha, post a postdoctoral researcher in the group, was tackling the so-called optimization problem by trying to describe these interactions which give off all sorts of strange and hard to glimpse particles based on various combinations of the particles mass vibrations and wide spectrum of their erratic movements among other things what helped to unlock the problem was a tool called the tool called the Fe Feynman diagram which represents the mathematical expressions describing the energy exchange between two particles that interact and scatter. Not only did this yield an efficient model of uh, particle interactions that captured all key string stringy features to some element, but also produces a new formula for pi that closely resembles the first ever series of uh, representation for pi in the recorded history. I am going to slaughter this name. I am. I am so sorry. Uh, by Indian mathematician Sagamagrama Madhava in the 15th century. These findings are purely theoretical at this stage, but it does have some practical uses. Okay, I'm hydrating. One of the most exciting prospects of the new representation in this paper is to use suitable modifications of them to re-examine experimental data for had hadron scattering. Our new representation will also be useful in connecting with celestial hol holography, the pair adds, referring to an in intriguing but still hypothetical uh, par paradigm, not paradigm, paradigm um, seeking to recon uh, reconcile quantum mechanics with general relativity through holographic projections of space-time. For the rest of us, we can satisfy knowing that researchers are more accurately to describe what Exactly makes up the famed irrational numbers. I know what it makes up. Pi! Nom 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 nom. Okay, sorry, bad joke. 